Hi and welcome back to another video of Medic Notes. This video is on approach to hyponatremia. There are a lot of causes for hyponatremia. It can be pseudohyponatremia due to hyperlipidemia or hyperproteinemia, hypertonic hyponatremia due to hyperglycemia, or hypotonic hypovolemia, which is divided into hypo, iso, and hypervolemia. Hypovolemia causes are diarrhea, vomiting, diuretics and many others. There is water and sodium depletion in such conditions, however the sodium depletion is more than water depletion, hence causing hyponatremia. Next, isovolemia can be due to SIADH, hypothyroidism, psychogenic polydipsia, and others. Whereas hypervolemia is usually due dilutional hyponatremia. It can happen due to fluid overload and cardiac failure, liver cirrhosis, and nephrotic syndrome. Next we look at the clinical features of hyponatremia. In acute cases, mild hyponatremia is usually asymptomatic. Serum sodium of 120 millimol per liter may be associated with disturbed mental state, restlessness, confusion, and irritability. As the sodium level approaches 110 millimol per liter, seizures and coma may occur. As for chronic hyponatremia, adaptive mechanisms tend to minimize increase in ICF volume and its symptoms. For assessment and investigations, Assess patient's fluid status from history of fluid intake or fluid loss. Look for signs like reduced skin turgor, tongue moisture, BP, JVP, any pulmonary edema, and check the fluid chart. Measure serum osmolality and compare with calculated osmolality. For management, these are the general principles. The main aim is to normalize patient's ECV and sodium concentration. Serum sodium should not increase more than 10 millimol per liter in 24 hours for asymptomatic patients or more than 12 millimol per liter for symptomatic patients. Asymptomatic hyponatremia should be corrected at a rate not greater than 0.5 millimol per liter per hour. If plasma sodium is more than 120, aggressive treatment is not required. Gradual correction by water restriction or normal saline. If plasma NA is less than 110, or patient severely symptomatic, then urgent treatment needed with more rapid rate of increase of 1 to 2 millimol per liter per hour. For the first three to four hours, avoid too rapid correction to normonatremic or hypernatremic levels. Avoid development of hypernatremia in the period following correction, as it may cause central pontine myelinolysis. This is the formula to calculate estimated osmolality. 3% sodium chloride provides 513 millimole of sodium. 0.9% sodium chloride provides 154 millimole of sodium. This slide shows how to calculate how much sodium to give. The change in serum sodium equals 2. Infusate sodium minus serum sodium. Divided by total body water plus 1. Total body water is the body weight of patient times the fraction of body water. The fraction differs according to these genders and age groups. Let's look at this example scenario. 60 kg isovolemic. 40 years old male patient. Presented with grand mal seizure with sodium level of 111 millimol per liter. First, count the total body water. 60 kilograms times 0.6, which is the fraction for men. So 36 liters of TBW. Identify time period of desirable condition, for example 3 millimol per liter in first 3 hours. Next, count the change in serum sodium using the formula. 3% sodium chloride provides 513 millimol of sodium. So in fusate sodium is 513. Serum sodium in this scenario is 111. Total body water is 36 liters. So 1 liter of 3% sodium chloride will elevate sodium concentration by 10.9 millimol per liter. To aim for 3 millimol per liter sodium elevation. 3 divide by 10.9 equals 0.275 liter of 3% sodium chloride needs to be infused over 3 hours. So the infusion rate is 92 milliliter per hour for 3 hours. That's all for this video. Thank you.